Hi everyone, so I am coming to you guys because I've been thinking about how I can help everyone and not just document my journey, um, <clears throat> but I want you guys to go on the journey with me. So if you have the book and it's been sitting there for years or, you know, if you just bought it and you're not sure what to do, um, I kind of want to point everyone in the right direction and kind of simplify things um, and make it easier because for me I was overwhelmed with oh man I have to buy all of this stuff oh man I, I can't I can't get all that stuff right now what you know what am I supposed to do you know, she wants me to get up at four o'clock what am I supposed to do so I want to help with some of your concerns and also um provide a way for you to break the book down and to help you um, prepare so um, I'm assuming that everyone has go ahead um, if you haven't gotten the book when you do get the book go ahead and read through the preface you know um, I've had to go back and read it you know a couple of times so it's okay if the first time you know you don't get everything just skim through it read through it and um, really get a feel for the book because this book is like uh, it's like uncharted territory it's like a land you know this certain page is going to lead you to this you know so it's it's like you're discovering a new world um, so so I want to go ahead and start off with the front of the book and this may be um, a pretty long video because I want to be thorough and I also want to uh, make it easier like I said for you to navigate so I'm going to point out page numbers um, we're going to start from the beginning of the book and we're going to work towards um, we're going to work through Gateway Zero. Now, we're not going to work through it as far as, you know, at the end of this video, you're going to be done. But as far as preparing for Gateway Zero, um, you know, making time and, uh, you know, getting the things that you need so that you feel prepared. If you're that type of person, you know, that you need to have everything. If you need it, you know, to know, okay, what do I have to get for this gateway? What do I have to get for this gateway? I'm going to help you. So um, when first reading this book, realize that this is a commitment. Um, there are nine gateways. And it, it says, I think on the back of the book, um, it says four months or 21 day change. Realize this is more than 21 days. Um, if you have a lot of hurt and pain and we've all been through things. So it's not going to be as simple as, okay, before the end of the month, I'm going to be cured of everything. No, this is an ongoing thing. Um, and even if you read Heal Thyself, which is over there somewhere, but if, even if you read Heal Thyself, it's the same thing. Um, so when you get to the point where you're modifying your diet, Heal Thyself will point out you know, we'll point out those dietary things as well. Sacred Woman does too, and Heal Thyself, I think it's more of a quick, it's a quicker reference. Um, but, so we're going to go ahead and start with, um, so we're going to briefly touch on the preface. Um, so, in the preface, you know, queen, the queen gives a description of why she put this book together, why she's doing this, and why you should do it. Um, you know, and why is it important to you? Okay. She also points out how to use this book. So you may have to go back a couple times and um, read that. Okay. Um, and then on pages six and seven, which is very, uh, I want to say it's very heavy because you, everything is laid out. So first, second, third degree is all laid out. You can only, you you can go back if you're if you go ahead and read through. You can go back and just read just read first degree training because this is all you're going to be doing. Okay, this is all you're going to be doing in Gateway Zero is first degree training. Okay, um, so don't overwhelm yourself with having to read everything. So just read page six. Just read 
first degree training. There's a nice overview there. Um, second, um, chapter one, which is ancient ways. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. So basically, this chapter um, gives you all of the comedic Nubian philosophy. It gives you the background of um, what we're doing, what we're going to be doing. And it gives you the spiritual purpose and, you know, the origin. Okay. And um, so I do want to point out, I had a friend of mine ask me, you know, isn't that, you know, um, what did they say? Isn't that, you know, made up? You know, they made that up. How can you participate in that? That's not, um, you know, I'm a Christian and I can't, you know, praise a false deity or I can't, you know. And um, my response to that, and I am only saying this because I've also read Heal Thyself. And in Heal Thyself, she does not point out a particular God. Um, she says to, you know, she says your creator. So she doesn't say that you have to go with what she's saying in her book. Um, you do not have to use, you know, her sacred book that she would use. She lists, you know, the Torah, the Bible, the Quran, um, the Husiya. Uh, she gives options because she knows not everyone is following, you know, the comedic Nubian spirituality. So, for sacred woman, um, I would say if you're not interested in the comedic, I mean, if anything, this should be a, you can know the origin of what you're doing. Um, and also, it helps to read the, um, it helps to read the descriptions because you can change your definitions, you know. Um, you know, for Asar, Osiris, you know, if you are a Christian, honestly, you can, that's Jesus, okay? And I'm not saying that, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not here to give you a history lesson and tell you what's right or wrong. I am just letting you know how to adapt this to you, okay? So, find some correlations here. Adapt them to you if it makes you uncomfortable, okay? Um, I'm actually interested in learning about my history and my culture, and um, I want to, you know, use these terms, but you don't have to, okay? Um, all right, so part two. Chapter one, part two is womb wisdom. All right, and essentially... Um, this is the beginning of Gateway Z. So this is part two. Well, not chapter one, part two. Chap part two of the book, chapter two. Okay? And um, here we go. So one of my concerns was setting up my altar. Okay? And um, if you are in Gateway Zero, depending on the gateway your altar is going to change. And, you know, if you have read through or have not read through, there's a lot in here and you're like, whoa, where do I start? I have to get all this stuff. Don't worry. Turn to page... Um, turn to page 134 in your book. This is your roadmap, Okay. It's going to tell you all the spiritual observances that you have to do. Um, it lists the gateway at the top. And then it lists the things that you need. You know, the things that change. Everything changes from gateway to gateway. So it lists everything. And on the next few pages, it lists everything for each gateway. Okay? So if you're beginning gateway zero and you're setting up your altar, and this is your first time because it's gateway zero. If you're starting here. Um, you're going to need frankincense oil. You're going to need a quartz crystal egg, some type of instrument. Um, bells, you know, is probably the um, 
easiest to come by um, unless you have an instrument already. Um, she has stones, moonstone, turquoise, black tourmaline, um, flower essences. Each stone has a particular use, okay? And as you read on, um, when you begin Gateway Zero, as you read on, she'll list that and it'll, you know, she'll specify that. Um, flower essences, which I'm having a hard time coming by. So if anyone knows where to get flower essences, um, I'm in Maryland, you know, let me know. Um, so you can choose up to three and she lists four or five that you can use for your particular concerns. Okay. Um, she lists dietary practices and tools. What will you need? For Gateway Zero, you just need a wooden platform to set up your altar. Okay? So back to um, part two, chapter two. All right? So again, um, it says an alt or other sacred symbol. So can you say cross? You can use, you know, a sacred symbol for you, all right? Um, so we're going to continue on. And again, she lists all of the elements of the altar, what they're used for. And um, those things are going to change. So pages 25 through 30, 31, 25 through 31, um, she lists all of the altar pieces specific to gateway zero okay so that is laid out for you so there's your listing <clears throat> now reading forward um, there's a sacred womb circle please try to find a circle in your community um, try to find a few see you know it, who um, if you fit in that circle not fit but if you feel welcomed in that circle and how you feel in that circle you know we're working on trying to get our own circle set up I don't want to be this facilitator but it's looking like I may have to be um, hopefully we can bring in an elder with a lot more experience than I do because I have no experience at all um, so they talk about the womb circle setting up the womb circle um, those are on the next few pages okay um, and then she talks about sacred time, and that's page 38, all right? And this is good to read, and even if you do not embrace, again, the um, names of the deities here, you can still, it still says, you know, nighttime, sunset, different times of the day and what you should be doing, all right? And, all right, so page... I want to say 41. Page 41, there's your sacred clock. All right? And this lists the timing of what you should be doing throughout the day. Um, you know, what type of food, you know, what seasons of time. Yes, yeah, she lists everything here. But it's not a schedule. This is a, okay, around this time, what should I be doing? What should I eat? You know, what am I thinking about? Okay. And every couple of hours, you know, you come back to this and say, okay, let me reaffirm. So for me, I, what I'm planning on doing is, you know, since I do have to work, is, you know, uh, take a restroom break or, you know, take a break at your desk or whatever you have to do to get some quiet time. You know, take a small walk during lunch if you can walk around the office you know and kind of read over and you know read about what you're supposed to be thinking of okay what you can have to eat taking that time throughout the day to think about what you should be doing um, and what you should be eating or could be eating will help you stay focused um, so ch chapter three uh, so this talks a lot about journaling and for me um, I have a journal that I bought which I showed you guys in my last couple videos and I haven't been writing in it too much just because um, I don't like to take it 
I don't like to take it from the house. I like to leave it home. Um, and I haven't been taking time to write. So I'm going to be trying to get up earlier every day and eventually work up till that six o'clock, hopefully. Um, and really have that time early in the morning while everyone's sleeping to write and to reaffirm myself and, um, you know, it's really easy to get behind as the days go on. So having that sacred time in the morning, even if you only get are able to get up 10 to 15 minutes early before you have to get dressed, take that time. Um, do your altar work. Journal some. You know, um, one thing I like to do sometimes is to write myself a note of what I was thinking about and what I need to write about later. And then when I go back, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to write about that. Um Okay, so just read this. Everything is essential to read, but for chapter three, understanding the importance of journal work is uh, very important, okay? Because, she, and she talks about, you know, preparing for your journal work. Um, all of this, you may have to come back to this. Um, she lists some questions. She, you know, has meditation. So writing, and for me, thinking about events even, you know, can cause me some pain. Uh, writing about them can surely cause pain because you're purging everything onto paper. Uh, and um, for some, maybe it's easier for you to type on the computer, even though I think that she advises against that in here um but if you if that's the only way that you can get it out do that you know don't say oh well i can't write it because i don't really have time or i need to you know type it out and honestly i've typed some things out and it helped and it helps and you go back and read those things too and if you have to print them out print them out put them in your journal so that you can reference them don't keep them locked away in your computer put them in your journal so you can go back and reference them and make notes and you know have everything accessible for you okay um and then questions and reflections before your journal work okay so there's a lot that goes into into writing um and then on pages 52 through about a couple it's quite a few pages um 56 she talks about she gives uh she gives some examples she gives some stories okay and i encourage everyone to read the stories because you may find some similarities within you and you may say wow if this person did it, i can do it and that really helps um so she then you know points again why she wants to heal and why this is important and um, page 59 is really about just your meditation your blessing your chanting your rituals your prayer um, all of that okay so that's chapter three chapter three is solely about journal work and the importance of it and how it can help you all right, so this is the last chapter. This video is almost 20 minutes long, but I'm hoping that I'm helping someone. Um, chapter 4, uh, page 67, The Care of the Womb. And this is where I say, um, bring in, heal thyself. Now, you can go ahead and forward, you know, read without heal thyself. Don't think you have to have it, but it helps to kind of lay out um, the dietary part. So... Please, please, please don't, you don't have to get healed thyself, but if you're able to, if you have a bookstore near you that has it, please get it. Um, so, chapter four is care of the womb. Very briefly, this is about natural living, exploring your womb, I mean everything, menopause, pregnancy help, and they have a... Um, she has a womb wellness profile. Now, if you have the digital version of the book, 
you can print this out as a PDF, which I think is amazing. Um, if, I think it's on the Kindle or something. If you have that, they have a link and you can print out a PDF. So my friend has it um, electronically, so she's going to print it out for me, which is really nice. Um, I was just going to go ahead and copy it. Put it right on the copier and, you know, copy it that way. Um, if you don't want to write in your book, I don't want to write in my book, so... Um, and then you can interpret your score, your scores. So that kind of gives you an assessment of what's going on with me physically, what's really going on. Okay. And, um, and then she's again, more affirmation, you know, woman balance stops here. Okay. And, um, again, this talks about really logging your cycles, knowing your menses, um, and, you know, listening to your body, okay, um, and again, lifestyle changes, herbs, going veggie, um, you know, and then you have a food plan, so there's a food plan in here, um, there's quite a lot on the food plan, naturally, um, and again, she talks about your menses, um, you know, and recovery plans. So this is very helpful. This is page 92 and 93. This is very helpful because it gives you two pictures. You know, it gives you an optimal health picture and a not optimal health picture. Okay. And you can look at those and say, wow, I need to fix my life. You know, and you see, she has a feather of not. And she does not because she is in balance and she is balanced. OK, and this is the things that she's doing and this is the thing that she's doing. So that's a very easy laid out picture, um, which I really like. That there's pictures and visual aids. OK, um, and then more on disease and wellness and healing drinks and showers and baths and all of that. OK, so all of this is in here to help you. She gives you, you know, if you don't know what it is. She'll tell you what it is, okay? So don't feel overwhelmed that you have to do all these things. These are all options for you. These are things that you can incorporate, and you don't have to incorporate them all at once. Um, you know, you can incorporate these, okay? And, um, again, taking care of yourself. And this is, you know, she talk, she's talking to women, um, gives dialogue from women, and, um, again, you know, you may find someone, you may find some similarities within you. So that, I believe, is the end of the chapter. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So, I'm going to stop here at page 106. Um, this is the Sacred Room Scroll. All right. And, actually, this is where I have stopped before. Um... Because there's a lot. This is where it gets, you know, really um, in depth. Um, but I encourage you, please read one page 106 and 107. Um, you know, in um, four ways to approach the wounds grow teachings. All right, and read through that. Okay, and this again, this is something that will affirm you if you're not already, you know, committed. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this is the part that I've been having trouble with, and I'm hoping by reading it again, it will help, um, you know, but I hope that everything that I've covered on this video is so long, um, I hope that everything I've covered kind of can get you started. So for Gateway Zero, again, go to page, even though it's far ahead, um, it's a great visualization. Um, 134, 134 through 139, and that lists everything that you need for Gateway Zero, all right? So, you know, start getting your items. Um, I'll put some links below to where you can get the items. If you don't, um, I would try Amazon, also try Queen of Fua's shop. Um, if you have an African shop or... I guess maybe an Indian shop in your neighborhood. Um, 
go there first, you know, for your oils and candles and things. Um, candles, you can get those from the dollar store. Um, you know, um, let me see. Yeah, an instrument, they should have those at your specialty shop. Um, you know, stones, they should have those at your specialty shop. You may be able to find um, a specialty shop somewhere. Also, Gateway Zero, you also need dandelion tea. Um, you can order the tea from Queen of Fua. Most of this, I believe, that you can order from her. So don't, you know, if you really don't have anywhere, you can order from her. Um, she's based in New York, so depending on where you live. Um, but other than that... I'm hoping that this has helped you guys, and I hope that um, for every gateway, I kind of want to do this. Um, since Gateway Zero is so long, I'm going to split it up. So once I get to page 106, once I get to page 106, I said, the wound scroll, once I get there, and after I read through there, I'll come back for um, part two of Gateway Zero. Um... And for every gateway, I kind of want to do this to where I kind of lay it out for you. Um, you know, this is what you do. This is what's going to be happening. So I just want to leave you with that. Um, and one last thing, you know, the essential thing is to make time for this. Um, make time for this. Even if, you know, throughout the day. Affirm yourself throughout the day. Take five minutes. Bring your book with you. You know, um, bookmark the clock. Bookmark the daily clock. Set an alarm on your phone or on your computer. And reaffirm yourself. You know, take five minutes. Read that. You know, read what you should be doing. Read some of those affirmations in there. Maybe write a little a line or two. Type a line or two. Email it to yourself or whatever. And um, that will keep you on track, you know, so it's not, oh, my friend's invited me for lunch, you know, just let them know, hey, you know, I have to go to the restroom, I'll meet you guys down there. Take that time to breathe and relax, okay? Um, and that's all I have for you ladies today. I hope this video is really long. If you made it to the end, um, you know, thank you so much because I really appreciate it and that means that, you know, hopefully I've helped you. So thank you. I'll see you ladies next time. Bye-bye.